You've unlocked a roundtable. Welcome to the Lost Levels Roundtable discussion of Fantastic Four. As you know by now, our roundtable discussions are spoiler filled. So if you haven't watched Fantastic Four, don't. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, if you haven't watched Fantastic Four and you don't want to be spoiled, then don't listen to this podcast. If you haven't watched it and don't really give a crap, go ahead and listen to it because we are going to be talking about this film in depth and going into plot and spoiler-esque elements of the movie. So that being said, with me as always, Alex Sandberg. Hello. Uh, why don't we just get right into it? Yeah. Fantastic Four, the, the 2015 version of it, so Fox can keep the rights. Right. This is basically just a, a rights grab. Yeah. It's not right. a cash grab, because we're not going to be making money on this one. No, this has been a... Kind of a train wreck, the production of it. The whole entire thing has is, is been yeah. a complete train wreck for Fox and for the development of this movie. And Directors was, pointing fingers, studios pointing fingers. That's the interesting about this. We're, this podcast is a couple weeks late uh, just because we haven't been able to to sit and talk about it. We watched it on opening weekend. Uh, yeah. So some of those dollars that you saw at the box office was us. Sorry. Be, because we wanted to do it. But we just didn't head up, we haven't had the opportunity to sit down and actually talk about it. Plus, I actually kind of wanted to think about it a little bit and... Uh, get an idea of trying to wrap my head about what I wanted to say about this. So How'd that work out for you? Not very good, okay, cool. unfortunately. But, we, but we've seen... Off to a great start. <laughs> but, but since we've seen... Well, actually, I just didn't really want to think about this movie very oh, much, God. to be honest it's... with you. Uh, we've watched movies after this, and I've enjoyed those movies a lot more. Yeah, I have I, um, I guess I did. But anyways, the thing about this is, after opening weekend, uh, the director... Josh Trank, kind of, he went on Twitter, oh, God. and said, "Because that's where you have to say important stuff." Right. Whenever you need to say something important, you always put it on Twitter. He went on on Twitter and said, uh, "This is pretty much. This isn't my version of the film. If my version would have came out, that would have been received a lot better." Uh, then that got deleted because the studio was not very happy with him for saying that. Oh, like why? Why would they not be happy about that? So Josh was pointing fingers at the studio and the studio actually came out and said, "No, no, 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 no." Yeah, you you kind of screwed up too, buddy. Yeah. So th- there's it was kind of like a perfect storm of disaster. That's exactly what it is. It's a perfect storm of disaster. It, as you know, they were saying in it, Fox is kind of notorious for being too micromanaging mm-hmm. with their with their movies they're making. So when they saw how bad the development process for this this movie was, they're kind of like, you know what? We don't want to be seen as those micromanagers anymore. We're just kind of going to step back and let him do his thing, which was apparently a bad decision, according to them. Yeah, because uh, reports from on set were saying that Josh, again, the director of the movie, was very erratic. He was... Kind of isolating himself from the rest of the crew. Very reclusive. He had like a tent that he would go to to look at all the the cuts and everything like that. will not let anybody else look at it. So he had this really strange... Apparently really demanding on the actors. Like telling them when to blink in the scenes and things like that. Like weird... Weird restrictions on their acting skills. Yeah, so how do you let an actor do your their thing and try to own the character where you're telling them when to blink? <laughs> During the scene. That's just crazy to me. Like, how do you get along with somebody like that? So, uh, needless to say, a lot of behind-the-scenes drama for this movie. And it, it shows on screen. Because so much so that this movie is all build-up. The, there, yes. the entire movie is all build up, and then at the very end of it, late in the third act, very late, probably the last ten or fifteen minutes, I would say. It, it's uh, they're like, uh, we need to put something, we need to put some action in this movie because there's not that much going we, on. We're like, oh guys, we're, we're reaching the two hour mark. You, you, let's speed up. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. We need this. So we need to finish this. So it basically boiled down to the studio benching Josh and saying, "You're going to sit this out." We're going to film an action scene now to finish this movie up just to get it done because they lost interest in the project. Josh obviously lost interest in the project and it just became this thing that they just wanted to get out and call it a day because they needed the rights. Yeah. They didn't want to relinquish the rights back to Marvel. 
They wanted to still have them for whatever reason because they've tried now with a couple of Fantastic <laughs> Four movies. Yeah. And it's it's saying something. If you can look back at uh, the the previous movies with Jessica Alba as Sue Storm and look at those movies and say, those are better Fantastic Four movies. Doctor Doom is better in those movies than he is in this one. Having never seen those movies, I cannot compare it to that. Oh, man. I should have made you watch it. You before probably you should have, this. but, like, I was just... I heard so many bad things about about those movies, I never bothered to watch them. And it was before we were doing this podcast, so I just never felt the need to at this point. Yeah, here, here, the thing about those, basically, was they're campy, over-the-top, just vanilla, mindless entertainment. There's nothing great about them. They're not on the level of Marvel by, by any means. They're just there. They kind of exist. But it's Fantastic Four. What kind of stuff you want from the Fantastic and Four? That's the thing. That's what's confusing. I mean, they want to hold on to these rights... But there's not, like, a huge cry for more Fantastic Four movies. Like, no one's, you know, chopping at the bit for this. Like, the Fantastic Four is not, hu- like, a huge power player in the Marvel Universe, as far as the fans go, I feel. Uh, so, they're, they're, they, have, they have a huge for fan a market, base. for a marketing standpoint and merchandise and stuff like that, not that big. Neither did Iron Man, though. And look at what they did. Marvel started with Iron Man, a character that was not very popular. I mean, popular, but not popular enough to the mainstream. Yeah. And they took a huge chance on that and made I Iron guess. Man this global phenomenon. I guess. So you can't really compare it like that. There's, I would say there's just as much, or if not more, Fantastic Four fans out there than there were originally at Iron Man. Really? Oh, I guess they had that cartoon. Let's sell it Iron Man. I don't know. Whatever. It's neither here nor there. It's, it's just weird that they, they were so eager to keep their rights to this... Yeah, Franchise, so I think they, they went. I, from, I understand Spider Man because Spider Man is beloved among so many people. But yeah, and they still can't get that right. And that's Sony. That's not Fox. Fox is a little bit. Different. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I, this this is a more realistic take, I guess, a more grounded, grittier version of the Fantastic Four that we saw in the previous movies that they made, uh, where they tried to take uh, maybe some of the Marvel formula, some of the Dark Knight formula. And try to mix it into making the Fantastic Four uh, seem oh. more realistic, or not necessarily realistic, but more grounded in more, our universe. Yeah, they made the characters at least believable to some degree. Yeah, and, and you know, I that you know, I'm going to say this. This is probably the best praise for the movies. Is there was really good character development throughout it, and I, I felt for them. And I believed in the characters. Okay, up until the end, where I they became paper cutouts. Yeah, and... With bad dialogue and bad acting. Like, the acting was fine up until a point, I think. Right. And, you know, the biggest outrage when this was first announced was obviously Johnny Storm being an uh, an African-American gentleman. Right. Played by Michael B. Jordan, which I love. I love that dude. Like He he played the character well. he's He's a great actor, and I really like seeing him and stuff. And I was curious, like, oh, really? That's an interesting choice for Johnny. And that, watching the movie, did not bother me in the slightest. I didn't care. It did not phase me at all. It, they, they, you know, they briefly explained it. Okay, Sue Storm is adopted. Fine. Let's go with that. Very plausible. Right. And it, it was just enough to explain everything, and it was fine. I still didn't distract me whatsoever. Yeah, didn't care. I, I mean, I, I liked, I liked the character development in this movie. I thought Reed was uh, an interesting take. Um, yeah. Yeah. We start out with Reed in his youth as a, as a kid yeah, doing yeah. a science project. It's way way light years <laughs> beyond, you know, a molten volcano or anything like that. And a very disparaging teacher. Yeah, what was up with that? That teacher kind of sucked. Like that's a bad teacher just in general. Yeah, seriously. But that plays to to Reed. Just it, it plays well to the character. Mm-hmm. On, on in a script, it makes sense that the, the teacher would be kind of be like that. Uh, in reality, I would assume that a teacher would be more like, "Holy shit, you just did something absolutely right, astounding," yeah. <laughs> uh, rather than, "Oh, that's, that's a magic trick. Get out of here." Yeah, I mean, just uh, stupid shit like that. But anyways, uh, gives uh, Reed more character or more depth to his character. Mm-hmm. Um, he bef- he befriends Ben Grimm. Uh, they become best buds. Yeah, Ben Grimm's kind of his, you know, lab assistant, so to speak. 
Yeah, it, it's just it's an interesting story leading up to uh, the events in the third act, and I enjoyed the the story in the back for the most part. It was interesting. I think it went on a little bit too long. There was a lot of build up, but I felt like a lot of that was needed. Unfortunately, like I just I felt like they were trying to do a lot with this movie and tell a grand story, and they were. And it was just, I don't know, like... I think for Trank's original vision, that huge build-up and everything makes sense. I don't know what that vision was, you know. I, I Yes. Because, and we won't, because, you know, uh, we talked about it. Fox really locked all that down and did their own version at the end just to save face. I, I feel like a vision wants to carry it to a sequel, almost. Yeah. I mean, it just feels like one long build-up to nothing. Yeah. Uh, but then we then we see them get their powers, which is kind of cool. They go to uh, Reed discovers a way to uh, transfer between dimensions. At first, he thinks that it's within the same Earth. Then uh, Doctor Storm, Sue, and Johnny's father is like, "No, you you've actually found another dimension." Doctor Storm. Yeah. Sue Storms and Johnny Storms' father. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking. But, uh, you know, it's like, no, you actually found a way to get to other dimensions. Right. Franklin. Franklin was his name, right? Damn it, I can't remember. Okay. But anyways, and so they, they hire... <laughs> kind of absurd that they're going to the high school science fair to look for geniuses to help them out with trans-dimensional teleportation. Right. So, take that for what it is. Kind of ridiculous, but whatever get past that hires them on and they work on this huge project to go to a new dimension which is where shit goes down and they get their powers right yeah and they get their powers they come back to earth and i think this is the type of realistic take that josh kind of wanted to do what if that actually happened in real life of course the military is going to take them and try to experiment on them a little, a little tropey i mean we've been seeing that a lot lately you know how can we militarize these blah 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 and they're going to weaponize them yeah. exactly and you've seen it in jurassic world uh it was an ant-man most recently so but yeah i mean you you realistically that's unfortunately probably what would happen in that regard think, yeah uh, you you wouldn't i think it'd be a lot more secretive i don't but I, I don't think that you would see, like, news footage of the thing or, or anything like that. But well, we didn't really necessarily see that either in the movie. It was, we saw military footage of the thing and it destroyed shit. Yeah, that's true. But then you also have to kind of determine what um, reality are they trying to establish. Is, is this a reality where there's already superheroes and this is commonplace? I mean, they don't really go into that at all, but... No, this is more of an isolated film. Yeah. This didn't try to expand in the universe or create it necessarily like a huge universe by any means. It was what would happen to these four individuals if they suddenly got superpowers. Mm -hmm. So very much see, contained. Yeah. So then they 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 weaponized the thing, used him in military operations. They were working on Johnny and getting him uh, used to controlling his powers and using those for. Weapon, uh, military reasons and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing about it was when Reed wakes up being experimented on, it takes this weird kind of dark, dark turn where you see Reed stretched out and like lab coats all around him. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just like a dark scene. It's well, and I, I feel like that's needed to kind of show his, his motivation to get out, you know, get out of Dodge as fast as he can. Like, he doesn't want to be in that situation. It's really fucked up for him. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just a dark scene where he's just like an almost an alien, and you, you would see, like, the military experimenting mm -hmm. on him, trying to figure out how he has these elastic powers, and then he suddenly hears Ben crying his name, trying to say, help him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, holy shit, this got dark, man. Like, this is not a kid. The relationship between him, between Ben and Reed gets really gets really dynamic because you know these were best buds growing up and suddenly ben just hates reed well he left him there yeah exactly reed escapes leaves ben behind and 
kind of just goes on on goes on the lamb. He hides. He doesn't mm-hmm. do anything. It takes Sue to find him uh, with her amazing skills of flying patterns and stuff. Right. So it's just definitely not a kids' movie. It doesn't translate to a kids' part where you're like looking at this like, oh, okay, kids will enjoy these dark ass scenes. By any means, <laughs> uh, they want to see you know they want to see the Fantastic Four kind of being campy. They want to mm-hmm. see that last version that we saw. Almost, I would think, aside from them fucking up Galactus <laughs> as being a cloud as opposed to being actual Galactus. But regardless of that, it was still more lighthearted and what I would kind of expect from the Fantastic Four. This is a dark turn, not necessarily a good one. I. I I don't know. Like we can get into it all day long and discuss like the, the the visions and the train wreck and what should be, what could have been. Doctor Doom is something I kind of wanted to touch on. Okay. Why can't we get Doctor Doom on the screen, looking like Doctor Doom? Looking like Doctor Doom or being like an accurate rep- representation of Doctor Doom. Because this is just... I, I did not like that that design of him at all. He looked horrible. It was goddamn awful. Like, okay, I, I kind of understand... You know, everything was fused to him, and it gave kind of that metallic face look, but just and still it, alien. And It was very alien-like. He had green alien eyes. It wasn't like a man's eyes behind a mask. Right. Or anything. It was like these green, lighting, glowing eyes. It was just this really messed up version of him and once again very dark yeah he's, he's exploding people's heads right this that is was... this was the akira moment that i was talking to uh, alex about offline josh trank wants to make akira okay he wants to make akira really fucking bad okay because when you watched uh what is it um the previous movie Chronicle? Chronicle. When you watched Chronicle... Yeah. And we originally reviewed Chronicle, we said in our review, this is the closest you will ever get to an Akira movie. Right. Because that last third that... act scene of it <laughs> was very Akira-esque. Very. Now, in this movie, a next big budget jo- uh, Josh Trank movie, we have another Akira type of scene where Dr. Doom is going through escaping the lab type of facility, blowing people up sec- telepathically. Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't realize that. It's very Akira. Dude wants to make an Akira movie. This is like his audition tapes for a live-action <laughs> Akira movie. He's like, look, dude, I've already filmed two of these films. I want to make an Akira movie. Yeah. Because, seriously, that's all this movie kind of turns into at the end. It's like, all right, dude. Yep. Like... This isn't a Fantastic Four movie. This is just a reel that you want to show for something else you want to do. And that's what it kind of feels like. And I think the studio kind of picks up on that a little bit and says, uh, all right, fuck it. You go sit in the corner. We'll finish up. We'll try to make an action scene out of this. Go watch some hentai or something. Yeah, go watch Akira, dude. Just go go watch it. Go go have fun with it. And then we're, we're going to try that, to put an action scene. That so film. much right now, honestly. <laughs> I didn't even put that together. Uh, yeah, that's, that was what I saw when I was watching that Doom scene. It's like, uh, this is Akira. What are you doing? And then they wrapped up the third act, uh, action scene at the very end, which was a major reshoot, by the way, because, like, when they were doing this, they did huge major reshoots on major action scenes. Obviously, that was what the third act, end of the third act was. It was last 10, 15 minutes. Right. Of just utter destruction and bad acting and bad dialogue. And completely abandoning all the character development that led up to that point. Yeah. Because it's like, Ben Grimm hates Reed Richards now. But, oh, at the end, they're buddy-buddy again. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it just turns on a dime. Everything is wrapped up nice and neatly. And we get to the end of it. They're all friends again. And we build up to a potential sequel. <laughs> and the way they did, they just they shoehorn in the the idea for a name of Fantastic Four was awful. that was that was horrible. I I oh I always hate when movies do that. Yeah. Like even Mystery Men. Yeah. Like Mystery Men did in a kind of tongue in cheek way. I love Mystery Men. Mystery that's, Men. Is fun that's movie. one of my favorite superhero <laughs> movies. That's a it's... fun movie. I have to watch it again. Yeah, that movie. But great. I always hate when movies do that. 
And they, they do it in the worst way possible in this movie. Mm -hmm. No, dude, totally agree with you. It's just, it's wrapped up so nice and neatly. We forget about everything that happens for the build-up and just, like, let's move on from that. And here's the op option for the second movie. Yeah. I, I mean, if, 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 they, if they do a second movie, of course they're going to get a different director and hopefully it will be less of... A disaster if they do that, mm -hmm. but I mean, there is DNA in this movie for a good movie. There's something in it that is enjoyable, but at the same time, there's just so many questions. Like, come on, why did you guys choose this? Why did you do this? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Blah blah blah, and it's just unfortunate. It's, it's, it's that's really, really what it is. It is like I said, a a perfect storm of disaster. That just kind of made this movie less than what it could have been. No, absolutely. So, I think that's it. Like, we're, we're, how, the final words. Okay. I mean, as I've been saying throughout, there there are parts of this movie that are not terrible. There are parts that I actually generally like. Right. Great character development. I, I care about the characters. I care about what they're doing. And... In the end, they just abandon it because of just the disaster that's going on at the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's I, 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 it's hard for me to say whether or not I can recommend watching this movie because in the end, it's not a complete movie. It, yeah. it, it is a movie that had an ending tacked onto it, and that's so. That being said, like if. If by chance they do make a new Fantastic Four movie, a sequel to this, I would say watch it just so you understand what led to this point. I think that would be... It's going to be... If they ever do a sequel to this movie, it's going to be so radically different mm -hmm. that it would not tie very much to this movie at all because the studio is going to bury this film as much as possible. Right. So unfortunately for that, I, I feel like I have to say you could, you could skip this one. Like... I know the internet and everyone's shitting on this movie a lot, like, but more so than it needs to be, just because that's the way the internet culture is these days. It's it's very extreme, bipolar, one way or the other. Right, almost. which is exactly how we kind of talked about in Pixels. Yeah. It, yeah it's, exactly. it's exactly the same type of thing. When the internet wants to hate something, it's going to hate something, and it, everybody is going to feed off of that same exact thing. Yeah. Because, you know, so there's a mean picture going around like oh my god it's getting worse scores on Rotten Tomatoes than I think it was Batman and Robin I'm like okay Batman and Robin is pretty fucking awful there's no way this movie is not as bad as that so it's it's just once again the internet hate culture just shitty on this but that still being said unfortunately I can't recommend you watching this movie just because it doesn't feel like a complete movie it feels like two movies stitched together yeah. That amount to very little. Okay. I agree. I don't think you should watch this movie. Uh, there's a lot of... There's an interesting movie there. But it's not a Fantastic Four movie. That's what I kind of walked away from, from this movie. And then learning all of the drama behind the scenes and everything that was happening behind it makes perfect sense. I think Josh is a really smart director. I think that... Given the right Akira movie, he will be amazing. But until he gets his Akira, we're going to be led with He's... bits and pieces of genius let out there. Where he can't put a whole entire movie together yes. as a whole. And I also feel like he needs to be kept on a short leash. I, I think... Uh, it, 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 it if the if the if the stories of his erratic behavior and allegedly coming on the set drunk as well, which were all stories that I heard allegedly, well, he's not going to get a big budget movie anymore. No, he, he. I think with an independent, short, smaller film that he has a lot of control over, I think that'll be a really interesting film. Okay, I think that it'll be uh, up to the levels of Chronicle, interesting, and not a big budget superhero movie. I don't think he'd be good for that type of thing anymore. Or a big budget anime movie. Yeah, like I just it 
there's something about him. There, there, I see the moments of genius inside of his films, and oh, there are moments definitely. of Fantastic Four that I really was interested in that I liked. But as a whole, it's not a Fantastic Four movie. And whatever they try to do to salvage it is too little, too late. Uh, they already sunk too much movie into, or they sunk too much money into a direction that the director wanted to go into, but the, the obviously the production did not want to go into, or the studio did want to go into. So it's it's an unfortunate mess. Wouldn't waste your time with it. Even if, like I, I kind of touched on, even if they do a sequel, it will not be anything near what this movie is. Uh, it will be a completely new take. Not necessarily, maybe maybe not an origin story, but oh, it will definitely nope, not nope. Uh, deal with this movie. I can't see them doing another origin story again this soon. No. So, uh, skip this movie. Yep. Uh, if you have any opinions on it, please let us know. We're on Twitter, twitter.com slash thelostlevel. We have a webpage, lostlevel.com. All of our social media links are up in the upper right-hand corner. I've been updating our YouTube page with uh, more of our latest episodes. So, if you haven't had a chance, go check out our YouTube page. And we would appreciate that. We're on iTunes. We're on Facebook. We're everywhere. So all those links, upper right-hand corner, lostlevel.com. Alex, how can we reach you? You can follow me on Twitter. My name there is Alex Sandberg, A-L-E-X-S-A-N-B-E-R-G. Or you can email me directly at the website, alex at lostlevel.com. And then uh, this is Chris. Uh, Chris, or it's twitter.com slash calmintensity. Uh, email is chris at lostlevel.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.